Hello designers, welcome back. This is part three of package design prototypes for print using Adobe Dimension. And uh, we're officially finished with Illustrator, but I think at the end of part four, we will hop into Photoshop for a minute to do a little post. But part three, what I have for you here is texture or adding materials and lighting your model. So back to dimension. Here's where we left off in part two. I have a really simple background made out of a couple planes, which are gonna look a lot more interesting uh, once I get these materials on them. I also have a canister in here, which I placed a repeating graphic on the bottom part of the canister and uh, on the lid, I've sort of reflected um, across that break line there, uh, what I would consider the brand name and then an interesting surprise, how fun graphic on the very top. I do have one camera bookmark set in here that is my home view. And actually what I'm gonna do right now while I'm here and looking at it, I'm gonna make my home view something that I have everything visible that I have placed on here. Um, that's so close to actually being flat to camera and being centered correctly. Let's come in a little bit and then I'm just trying to get my orbit around correctly so that everything is flat. What I'm actually watching is the horizon line up there at the top and then I want to make sure that I can actually see the graphic I placed on the top. So what I'm going to do now is add a new view and this is going to be home base now and then I'm going to go back to my original home and delete and then go back to home base and this is where I'm going to start working from. Okay. I'm going to zoom out a little. I'm going to take this first plane uh, over here on the left hand side right now with the uh, quick buttons. I'm set to the models. The next button over is materials and let's go with uh, I'm a fan of kind of dark to be honest. Uh, I think I'm going to go with this crackle concrete. This is cracked concrete. Uh, you can see it's placed inside of plane two now. And um, the age slider here is what actually controls the amount of distress and crackle you have in here. I want some texture in the background, uh, but not a whole ton of it. Uh, so I'm going to adjust that slider. The technical and the miscellaneous stuff, honestly, unless you're dealing with a material that has opacity to it, something like uh, water, glass, gel, oil, beer, all of those things are in here. That would be when it would call for getting down here in these technical parameters. Generally, what um, I really try to do is as much as possible stick with the way things come up when they're loaded minus the smallest tweaks. I find that I get crisper renders when I'm not trying to push dimension to do stuff that it really doesn't know how to do well quite yet. Uh, so my other adjustment here, I'm going to take this into cool. Remember, cool colors recede in space. Warm colors come forward in space. So I'm going to set my background to cool colors so it naturally recedes away. And then my package is built with a warm color palette and that will naturally come forward. And that's just going to help sell that this is a real deal photo and not a com computer generated render. Uh, so I want just the smallest amount of blue in here but I really want to go dark, uh, really, really dark. Maybe not quite that dark. I want to read a little bit of blue. Um, that is probably good. You know, what I'm seeing here, if I want to kick on my render preview for a second and get a little better feel for exactly how dark this is, that's pretty good. Uh, I also haven't set my lighting yet, so. Okay, here's a cool thing. Um, 
I have my original plane that's sitting flat to the ground now, and I want to put materials on that. But the thing is, I pretty much, minus color change, want to make it exactly the same as this one that's standing up flat to camera. What I can do to accomplish that is click on the eyedropper tool and then click on the plane in the background and it will copy the way that I have the material set, including color and all the other settings. So now I can go back to V, uh, which technically is the move, move tool here, but it really does act like the selection tool. I'm gonna go back to my home base bookmark so I can get a good up close view of exactly what this looks like down here. Uh, and then I want to make sure I get into the actual materials for this. So in this first plane, which I could also, I should be renaming these, right? That's my ground. This one's my back wall. Um, I know what the tube is. I know what the rest of the stuff is. So on my ground, if I click the little out arrow to go inside of that, think of it as getting inside of a group. Uh, in Illustrator or Photoshop. And now I have the material, my cracked concrete here. I think what I want to do on the floor is uh, take out as much of the age as I can so it's as smooth as possible. And then I want to dial up the color and dial down the darkness on this noticeably so that I get a nice transition from ground to back wall. Okay, that does it for me in here. I can go back out to my scene. What I need to do now is apply, I don't really wanna apply a color to this material on the tube package, but what I do, or a new material, I could. Right, I could give this something really textured. Um, I could make it laser cut. I could make it uh, wood if I were so inclined. That's taking a minute to pop in, but you get the idea. Uh, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and command Z back out of that to where I was before I threw that material on there. All I really wanna do is change the color. On this. So there's the um, properties, the material thumbnail. Here's the base color down in the properties menu. I don't want to adjust the image. What I want to do is adjust the color that's happening here. And now um, I do have a color palette in Illustrator. I could go check those numbers and dial this in by the numbers. I also have an eyedropper available to me here that if I think I have the color in my artwork, I can sample around until I think I find the exact color I'm looking for. And I think what I'm looking for is something a little closer to these oranges. I don't quite want it totally neon like that. Let me dial in something I can live with looking at for the rest of this demo. Uh, I'm just going to go into really, really, let's go super a and uh, deep rust orange color. So make sure we have enough contrast. And right there, I can just see the color popping in. Uh, that works for me. And notice it did um, the top and the bottom on that. So if I actually want to just adjust the, what I can do now is go into just the lid and I should, these are supposed to adjust separately and I'm not sure why they aren't. Uh, I am also not going to fight that battle uh, during a demo here. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to try one more time. No. Okay, it's just not letting me do that. Um, 
I've done that before. Maybe I cheated it um, by actually having a background on things. Ah, that was how I did it. Um, so that being the case, here's what I can do. Uh, this is a little tricky. So I'm just trying to get a different color down here on the bottom. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is in the canister, I have this pattern graphic of the egg yolks, right? This, of the eggs and bacon. What I can do is double click right here. That'll take me back to Illustrator. And what I can do is put a background color behind this. And let's see, my colors should be over here. Let's get rid of that stroke for a fill color. Let's go pretty light, a little lighter, a little lighter. That works for me. Um, I need to, sorry, cancel and selection, save. Notice my file name decal base color one. So that means that's a working copy. It's not actually the original file. It's acting like a smart object would in uh, Photoshop. So this I'm happy with, okay? So this is good. Um, next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and set my, I'm gonna go ahead and set my camera views here I am kind of a fan of a nice worm's eye. So we're gonna call this worm, enter. And then I want something that is a little more top down where I can really see the graphic on the top. And I'm gonna call that my three views. So that is good for bookmarks. This is a really good time to hit save. Uh, I'm gonna go back to my home base. I'm gonna zoom out a little. I'm gonna come down here, right there. Now I'm ready to look at lighting. So the next button over is the lighting. The directional lights that are here up top are a really great place to start. When you're looking at lighting, it can be really helpful to use the render preview so that you have a better idea what the materials look like and where the hot spots are on the lighting. Uh, I think for me, nothing with a backlight is going to work for me because I have that lighting blocked. You can see how dark this gets when I hit that backlight there. Um, what probably is going to work for me is studio front low key possibly a fill that's too bright for me uh, uh, how about the soft box there it is all right that works for me uh, I'm going to double check my bookmarks here and make sure they just look okay from kind of a back view. I think those look great. All right, I am going to save and I will see you all back for part four. We'll talk about rendering and